All right, so Investigation Discovery, IDTV, in cooperation with the good people at People Magazine, People Magazine Investigates. Got a brand new series you need to know about. Alicia Dennis joins us now, uh, editorial director uh, at People. And uh, Alicia, I don't want to, you know, skew the voting, but I know I'm up for Sexiest Man Alive, and good luck to me. Good luck to you. I mean, the votes keep coming in, so you never know what could happen. (laughs) This true crime phenomena that has taken over podcasting and has been the number one category in podcasting for years now um, certainly doesn't get missed on television as well. And you guys have done something here, which, frankly, I didn't know there was a need for, but apparently there is. There's a Chicago-based episode, but it all gets going this weekend. Surviving a serial killer. Give me the elevator pitch. I think this is really a unique show in that, you know, we've done a lot of uh, People Magazine investigates, a lot of um, looking at cases, and we definitely talk to victims' families and law enforcement. But this particular series is really focusing on survivors, people that came face-to-face with serial killers and managed to escape. They were, in many cases, kidnapped, attacked, um, and found a way to survive. And not only that, but they're sharing these emotional and really chilling, frightening stories, many of them for the very first time, and taking us back to the places where this happened. These um, these people sat for their interviews and walked through these places where they had been uh, kidnapped and taken. And I think that as weird as this sounds, I know it's dark and I know it's terrible and awful and really, really creepy content, but there is some uplift and some inspiration and hope in the stories that these people share with us. And they're doing it so that they can help other people, so they can help law enforcement crack these cases better so that they can support other victims. And that's kind of remarkable. Alicia, this is really exciting. It's six episodes, kicks off this Sunday. So every episode, every Sunday for six weeks. I watch a lot of Law and Order, but these are real stories. And that's what we have to remember, that they're real survivors. They're actual stories. The first episode is about a teenager and when when she was attacked. But that was in 1965, and she'd never talked about it. Never. Mm -mm. No. And, you know, what's so hard for these survivors is they live with this every day, right? The world has gone on and life has changed. But this is something that stays with them all the time. And it really took this long for the survivor that you mentioned, her name is Morgan Rowan, to come forward. And that is part of like her healing journey to be able to share for the first time exactly what she encountered. She was attacked twice. (sighs) By a serial killer who um, uh, is went by the moniker no is known to law enforcement as the dating game killer Rodney Alcala. Are you familiar with with that guy? Oh yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah makes absolutely. Makes me sick. Yeah, I mean, like back when reality television was brand new, they had the show The Dating Game, mm-hmm. which oh, yes. you know the end of. Right. The end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, -hmm. where a bachelorette would come on the stage and there'd be a screen between her and three bachelors. And she'd ask questions. Bachelor number one, if I pick you, where will you take me and will you meet my parents and all that? So not only did this guy charm producers to get on this show, but he won the day. Mm. I mean, that's. (sighs) That's how, you know, compelling and conniving and whatever he was. He was already murdering people by the time, you know, he showed up on the show. No one knew that, of course. Um, And police believe that he murdered between 80 and 120 women in the course of um, his spree. One of the most prolific serial killers. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that jumps out, too, as you look through this episode guide, that we have Lexington, Kentucky, West Palm Beach, Philly, Toledo, Ohio, and an episode here in Chicago. Uh, they're everywhere. Yeah. It doesn't mean yeah. you can't leave the house, but there is a very difficult job for the FBI to profile these because, as you said, you could fool the screeners for a game show. Uh, you can live your life generally um, as you do. Very few of them appear to be patently crazy. Well, that's the thing. Do you find a pattern? Because obviously they have severe mental health issues, but is there a pattern that we see in the series? You know, um, we jump around a lot and look at a lot of different kinds of cases, but it's such a good question because a lot of these survivors talk about 
that they would encounter this person and this person would be boy next door level charming, you know, somebody that was telling jokes and, and, you know, you've heard those kinds of stories about people like Ted Bundy, you know, where everyone yeah. wanted to be around them and talk to them. And, and then they'd say in this split second, just in a second, something would turn and all of a sudden their face would go blank and their eyes would become almost like the eyes of a shark, completely nothing there. And you would be face to face with a monster just in seconds where that switch would be changed. And it it just makes the, you know, hair on the back of your neck stand up because multiple times these survivors would explain something that was very similar that they would see that happen. Yeah. And the FBI profilers I've spoken to about this through the years too, have also said one of the great problems in finding these people are families deal with the crazy times and generally don't talk about it until afterwards. Not that families are actively harboring a serial killer, but they know they've got a problem on their hands in their family. And certainly in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I mean, we're just coming to terms now with mental health and doing the right, right. thing. So fast right. forward, June 2nd, Surviving the Handsome Devil. This one took place in Chicago. We don't want to give the episode away. I want people to watch it. But what can you tell us? Well, this is another one of those incredibly, you know, charming guys who he was known as the the handsome devil because he had these incredibly searing, beautiful blue eyes and they they were striking and remarkable. And people would, as soon as they met him, just feel, felt, you know, compelled to be near him. And it was just really kind of um, that, that creepy, scary thing that he was hiding this really dark, dark side and these awful secrets um, that he was attacking multiple young women. It took decades for two survivors that we interviewed to even discover that it had been the same person, you know, that both of them had been attacked by and to work towards, you know, making sure that there would be justice in this case. But uh, you know, like you said before, with the with the law enforcement and the FBI, it's so difficult in these cases because the crime scenes sometimes span around the entire country. Yep. You know, in this case, it was really in the suburbs of Chicago, and so that made it a little bit easier. But when you think about it, like for Rodney Alcala, it was from California to New, to New Hampshire, and that's just a wide range of crime scenes, very difficult to connect and very difficult when jurisdictions didn't communicate with each other the way they can now investigation you know? discovery as uh, jane said premieres sunday night and then every sunday night eight o'clock chicago time wherever you're listening and around the country nine o'clock east and west you know the drill and uh alicia thank you for the time and uh you know i hope you sleep okay yeah <laughs> sometimes it's hard you know sometimes yeah. it's hard when we're putting these together but I, um, I appreciate you guys talking to me about it all right you take thanks, care alicia. thanks for coming on Eight sixteen on the big 89 wls creeped out at all? A little bit. I'm looking at a picture of this Bruce Lindell. Yeah. He's a good looking dude from Downers Grove in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Blue eyes. And I mean, he got a lot of attention. It. You just think they're so charming and are nice. You fall into it, You have no idea. And then that face, like she said, that blank face comes in. I wonder, do the su- survivors have a support group? Do these women, you know, did they know each other or because Probably of this? Probably more so likely now, right? Yeah, I would think so.